Uh, this is Peter O'Rourke with the National Alliance for Public Safety GIS Foundation. Uh, today is the um, Homeland Security Geospatial CONOPS um, training session, virtual training session, um, the fourth in NAPSIG's virtual training series for 2014. Um, we are uh, fortunate to have David Lilly from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Geospatial Management Office, office um, conducting today's training. Um, and with that, uh, David, we'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone uh, is having a wonderful uh, Wednesday. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity provided by NABSIG. Um, I think it's a good reflection of our partnership to, to help bring the geospatial community at all echelons of the government together uh, to ensure what we're doing as a community really is 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 effective. So I appreciate this this um, this opportunity. As as Peter mentioned, my name is Dave Lilly. Uh, I am the geospatial conops program manager. I joined DHS GMO uh, earlier this year at the start of the year, uh, coming from the DoD. So I'm fairly new to the program. Um, but my intent today really is not to go over slides and drill slides into anybody's head. I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of discuss quickly what the GeoConOps is and then show you some of the new capabilities that we're rolling out that, that we think can help you guys and bring the community better. Um, so with that, um, I'm, I'm kind of going on somewhat of an assumption that there was a follow-on topic last year in the November time frame where some of you guys may have participated. So I don't want to repeat a lot of the same content, but I do recognize that some people might be new to this forum. So I do have a couple slides that kind of just kind of give an overview of the GeoConOps. And if it's new to you, great. If it's not, I apologize if it's duplicate and I won't spend too much time on it. So let's, with that, I'll get into it. Um, as Peter mentioned, if there's any questions or comments that uh, need to be uh, interrupt me, please feel free to, to shoot them across, and then afterwards I'll handle anything that waits to the end of the thing. Um, so let's. this is the agenda. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, you know, what, what I really want to uh, accomplish today is go over the five whys of the GeoConOps, so really who, it, who manages it, or what is it, uh, when, when is it uh, published and updated, where do I get it, and then why is it important to me or you or whoever. But bottom line, what we're trying to do with the GeoConOps is improve geospatial coordinating within this homeland security enterprise. So what we want to do is drive down costs while we're increasing operational effectiveness. Um, when we talk about the homeland security enterprise, really what we're talking about there is the, the entire spectrum of government, you know, from tribal to territorial to local, state, federal. We want to be operating as seamlessly as possible uh, in, in situations that require homeland security and defense. Um, so our goal was to drive down costs while increasing effectiveness. And there's some some sub elements of that. You, know, you could say costs with uh, data duplication, data sharing, technology, effectiveness with better data faster driven to you. So that's really our goal today. Um, real quick, I know uh, my colleague, Mr. Lou Summers, gave a briefing last week uh, on what the Geospatial Management Office is. Um, and... Um, I don't want to rehash that, but just to give a quick update for anybody that didn't didn't uh, see that, the geospatial management is really involved in technology, tradecraft, information, and policy. Um, we are at the uh, OCIO's office within the DHS headquarters element. We like to think we're driving the nation towards a national framework for geospatial information and sharing. Um, we're in the business of collaborative governance. We have tight partnerships at all different echelons uh, from the FGDC or the National System for Geospatial Intelligence side. We really want to deliver high quality geospatial information that's really rely, uh, not only aligned to your mission requirement, but meets your mission requirements needs, whether it's timeliness, accur accuracy, accuracy, those types of things. Um, we want to be able to do that in a shared uh, enterprise hosting environment. So if there's, aside from data, if there's enterprise tools, applications, or analytic services, we want to do that through a common infrastructure. We realize to do that, you need to have um, advanced standards and technology. And then you need to build tradecraft and standing operating procedures to really utilize those technologies to their, to their maximum uh, capacity. So that's who the geospatial management is. One of the things that we do within here, and I'm just kind of circling it with my mouse, is that we manage the Homeland Security geospatial, uh, Homeland Security geospatial concept of operations. So let me talk to you a little bit about what that is and why we think that's important. Um, so the Homeland Security geospatial conops, uh, what is it? Uh, we think it's a whole of a nation approach to managing geospatial uh, requirements. Uh, coordination, uh, authoritative data sources, best practice, and technical capabilities. 
Most importantly for you, we think it provides a resource for understanding what we have at the federal level to support Homeland Security, Homeland Defense missions, and how you would how you would access those um, during uh, during an incident that requires you to to have access to them. Um, the Homeland HANOPS is managed and administered by the GMO, as I mentioned, but it's really guide influenced by a community, a community that we call the Geospatial Interagency Oversight Team, or simply GEOT. Um, like I said, I'm coming from the military, so we're really big on acronyms. Um, so the GEOT is a, a team of people that have come together that consists of 45 organizations, um, within 20 different agencies and partners. And you can see that NAPSIG is a valuable partner of us and that contains that, that represents the people on the phone today um, in its entirety. Um, but the, this is a snapshot of some of those organizations that participate. So what we do is we meet on an annual, semi-annual basis to kind of review the direction of the, uh, the CONOPS, include input to the CONOPS, and then steer it in the right direction of what needs to be in there, what needs to be pulled out, what needs to be added, those types of things. Um, but it's really a community, a whole community approach to how we want to go about capturing that concept of operations for geospatial community. Started well before I got here. Um, like I said, I came over in January. Um, the, the, the program itself is in, you know, a phase of a multi-phase, uh, multi-phases. Um, I, I didn't break this down by year, but what I want to just kind of show is the evolution. So in the past, kind of what we wanted to do is set a foundation for the GeoConOps. This was several years ago. Um, so the team worked hard to lay the foundation for what the concept of operations should be. It was guided by that GEOT. It started out as, as a foundational document or framework to really look at common event types of magnitude supported under the NRF, ESF, and PPD-8 and Stafford Act. Um, and it really specifically, initially at first, it addressed, it addressed emergency response, non-catastrophic incidents. And then it, o over some time, it kind of uh, expanded into catastrophic events. And then over time, it went into full emergency management life cycle, um, really looking at the five mission areas of preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. Um, one of the things that we did uh, was working with the GIs. We said, okay, well, where do we go from here? Um, so our current focus area was to maintain what was in that baseline foundation, so make a complete revisement of some of the language in there, dated language gets cleaned up, you know, basic administrative changes, but really focus on updating the requirements, capabilities, authoritative sources, and best practices that are listed within the document. And then we wanted to expand the content to really look at law enforcement and intelligence communities and how they operate as a community for homeland security and defense. That's where we're at today. So we're in, in, the, in the near future, um, within the next week or two, we're going to have the next version. It's version six of the GeoConOps in draft form ready for the community. Um, you guys will have the opportunity to review that if you choose um, and, and make comments on it. Hey, here's where we think what was missing. Here's what we think would be added. This change just didn't change. Really taking that uh, community approach to reviewing the doc to see if, if, if it meets our needs. Um, if there are big things that we need to expand upon, we'll look at that in that future focus area. And kind of where we're looking at right now with the future focus areas, there's always going to be some baseline maintenance that needs to be done to it, constant revision of capabilities, technologies, authoritative data sources as they evolve. But really looking to expand this document into PPD-21. There are some elements hit on within within the COPS right now, but we think we can, we can really expand the PPD-1 and support critical infrastructure and security resilience. Um, within the CONOPS and capture how we're doing that with the geospatial information infrastructure. So I want to dive a little bit into version six here, what it is and what it isn't, um, because that's really where we are today. And I kind of mentioned where we are with there. But really what it is is an annual top to bottom review. Like I said, we're going to do minor edits across the entire document. We're adding details, so whether it's authoritative data sources, requirements, some capabilities have been either sunset or migrated to new capabilities. We want to make sure we capture that appropriately. Um, full review of Appendix B, which is one of the bread and butter things of the COPS, is what data sources are available to the community, what geospatial data sources are available to the community, and how do you get to them. It's a revision of Appendix G, which is another appendix within the CONOPS for the national grid. And that's going to be in line with the NAPSIG implementation guide that's available there. So that, that's, that's something that's big for us. And like I said, we're really looking at a new annex that focuses on intel and law enforcement. Um, we've had key engagements with that community to include uh, DOJ, CBP, Secret Service, ICE, Coast Guard, and really the entire intelligence community as it's, as it's defined by Executive Order 12333. 
uh, within that within that uh, annex, we envision or we're building a um, scenario um, to help users better understand. Well, okay, I got this concept that captures these these things. How would I apply this to to my work area, or how would I actually use this to help me? We're gonna we're developing a scenario that will help assist readers and users with that. So, hey, here's a scenario. Here's some events, the timeframes of which uh, events occur, and then how and how you would use the comps to help you or help the user assist uh, them in understanding what that is available or what can I do as a best practice to help solve my mission. One of the big things that we got to do with this document is given the higher sensitivity of the document, we're going to publish it separately than we do with the base document. So the base document is completely unclassified. There are, there are very little restrictions on it. Um, but this one we're going to probably, probably, or we're, we're planning on publishing it at the, at least a sensitive but unclassified level. And we know that most of this community often operates at a, a secret or top secret level. So eventually what we want to do is push it on those networks so it's, it's immediately accessible and those users aren't having to search for that annex. Um, but we also realize that other folks like yourself may be interested in the content of that given a, given a certain situation and you want access to it and the classification will allow us to do that. So right now we're thinking it's best to publish that on the DHS Geospatial Information Infrastructure and or the IntelliLink page. And then we'll also have an appendix that covers the FEMA Modeling Data Working Group. Uh, there are some model, modeling best practices that we'll dive into a little bit. Right now, uh, version 6 is just about ready for the draft, ready for the community review, and it's our hope to get the baseline document out this week for review at the end of the week for a couple-week review, and then next week to publish the annex to the, to the, uh, to the large team for their review um, starting next week. So how do I get the comps? Well, we, we publish the comps on many different media. Um, there, are, there are traditional printouts, so there's a full print version for the last version, version 5. There's a quick start guide, so as you can imagine, this document has grown over time. Um, so we've kind of simplified that down to a fact sheet and a quick start guide. Those are available now, uh, or those, are, those have been available for some time, and if you, if you like some of those mail out to you, we can get those to you. Um, there's also digital copies available online, and I'll point you to those. And then we have online resources. So we've developed some online web-based training that will help guide users on, okay, what is really the geocomp and how can I use that? And we were pleased to say that there are some, uh, some web-based courses that you can take and get certificates for. And I'll point you to those in a little bit. Um, but really the big thing where we're at today and what I want to stress and what I'm going to really spend the most of my time on today is going over the new, uh, the, the modified GeoConops website. So for some time we've had a GeoConops beta website that's been available for the community, but we've recently worked with the Department of Interior to migrate that beta site fully over to the Geo Platform website. We just went live with this uh, this Monday. Um, and um, my intent today is to kind of go over what it is and how you can use it and how you can drive around and find some of the content that's within the GeoConops. What we're finding is that we want to we want to increase the user's ability to find information within there. The the print document's a good document, but if you guys have ever searched through an encyclopedia, it's easier just to type in a word, search and find it. And we think with the with the website type technology, we can further improve the capabilities that the GeoConops provides to the user base. Um, so let's go into the website a little bit. Um, the GeoConops Online, like I said, is available now. It provides everything that's in the GeoConops to date has been rolled in and provided in an online uh, form. You can search all the document content and data listings from the web-based uh, view. Um, the data catalog is searchable by your PPD or ESF missions. So if you're like, hey, I got this specific function that I've got to satisfy or this specific mission area within PPD, you can search the data matrix by those and just get those sub-query results. And then we also have a mobile view to this. So if you're going to if you want to view this on your mobile device, whether it's a tablet, Android, or iPhone or BlackBerry, there's a mobile view that's uh, as part of the geo that we've worked with geo, the, the geo platform folks to provide, and we're going to further optimize that as we for, continue to migrate and mature the website. So what I'd like to do now is actually drive around and show you guys the, the website um, and how you access it from the geo platform website. I hope everybody's familiar with. I think this everyone has seen this this page before. Um, you can see right here they're actually announcing the launch of the uh, community right there in the banner section. Um, so, but let me show you how you get to the website and then how you, how you navigate the website and some of the capabilities within the website. 
So once you're on the geoplatform.gov uh, website, what you're going to do is click on Communities and Agencies. And when that page loads, what you'll see is that there are different communities that have been established. And one of them is the Homeland Security Geospatial Cops. It's down there as part of the federal agency communities. So when you click that, you're going to go to the, security, the Homeland Security Geocops homepage. Um, here, what you can be able to do is, is our model was three clicks or less to try to drive you, you, the user, to the information as quick as possible. So there is a little video that you can watch if, if you feel like my briefing is boring and you get, don't want to read about it. You can watch the video here and understand what the GeoConops is. There's some testimonies from some, some key stakeholders and partners that you can review the video in. Um, but let's get to the meat and potatoes, right? So what is the GeoConops? So you can click what is the GeoConops hyperlink, and it will provide you a little bit, a synopsis of some of my content today. It tells you some of the benefits, contact information. From here, you can also download the electronic copies if you don't have a print. Um, I'm just going to open this in a new tab. For, so we don't have to go back and navigate. But you know, as you click these, you can access the print version, print off a page, a series of pages, the whole entire document if you choose. Um, the quick guides, the trifolds, they're all available from these pages. There's link backs to all these from all the functions. But let's go back to the splash page. So once you're on the front page, what you'll see is there's basic functionality that allows you to toggle back and forth between the geo platform main site, which is in your blue, your blue banner here. So this provides you links back to the geo platform homepage. And then there's the site navigation within the Homeland Security GeoConnels website. From here, you can access the data, mission areas, tools, best practices, forums, and the about. Um, we envision most people to say, okay, well, what is the CONOPS and how do I use the CONOPS? So um, we talked about the GIOT. This provides a snapshot of who's all part of there, itemized by agency and organization. Um, the other thing it does is it tells you how to use the GeoConops. So we talked a little bit earlier about, okay, well, there's some training courses available. You can access those training courses through this website. So if you click, how do I use the GeoConops? You can come in here and read a little bit about the training, um, and then actually click on the training and then register for the course. It's free free training. You take it, understand at three different levels of basic introduction to in depth to you know hey you're a, you're a practitioner and you really want to understand how I can take this comps and apply it to improve my tradecraft. So there's three different levels of uh, training. It goes from about a half hour to about an hour hour and a half depending on how fast or slow you go through the content. Um, and then we're going to provide other relevant training courses. Because some of, a majority of the information is that's uh, available it might be either resident on a geo platform or the geospatial information infrastructure, we provided links to some of those training courses of how you get access or how you use those sites. So here we envision more going in here, but right now is available as the DHS geospatial information infrastructure training. So that's how you get to the training. Let's go back to the splash page and do a couple other uh, functionality. So um, <clears throat> within the GeoCons, if you're familiar with it, there's a best practice. There's a there's a set of best practices that are scattered throughout the document. Those have been centralized here, um, so you can read what the best practices are as the community identifies them. They can contact the GMO through the contact information and say, hey, if you considered this, this is the best practice, here's why it's the best practice. Those can be listed in the future. You can click on these and get more detailed information. So if we find one that we want to talk about, because we've talked about the, um, the geospatial information infrastructure, we've talked about some of those things. As we, as we look through these things, you'll be able to click these things and we'll just click the geospatial platform here because that's the site that we're on. You'll get more information about what it is, and then you'll have hyperlinks back to other areas of the document. So it's just a way to find out information about what's available to there. Now there's some tools, uh, tools and data. We think that um, these things will be matured over time, but these are some of the, the tools uh, and resources and capabilities that have been identified by the community. As general uh, tools that are have a wide-reaching or enterprise type of um, capability to them that, that are accessible to the entire community. So we talked about the GII. So when we click on there, if you're not familiar with it, it will give you a short overview. 
and like I said, I think most of you guys are because Mr. Summers gave a briefing on what this is. But this tells you how to get to it. In the future, there will be drivers of how you get access to it. There is a HISN uh, link where you can click on that and find out how to get a HISN account if you don't have the GII account, uh, if you don't have access to the GII. Uh, but let's talk about the data because at the end of the day, it's all about how do I get to the data that I might need to support my missions. So when you click uh, the data button, uh, it will come up to the data matrix. And this data matrix is fully searchable by ESF and by um, PPD. So once this comes up, what you'll be able to do is actually query this data and get, get, get results. I apologize, my computer's acting a little slow. Um, I, I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with the, um, the geocoms itself. As we wait for this to load, uh, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to jump in. But so if you're familiar with the geocomps, there is an appendix B which lists all the data sources that are available. Here we've taken that content, we put it into a table form, and we, we envision this to continue to mature as we as we maintain the site. Um, there are some things that we think can further f further optimize the use of this to the community. But here you can perform a search, and I'm not going to perform a search right now just because of the time it might take to search through all these records. But here you can you can do a basic search by ESF. So if you want to search by ESF 11, 14, 10, you can click that drop down. You can also perform a, a search by PPD-8 mission areas. In the future, this could be PPD-8, PPD-21. Those attributes will be added to this data. And then once you find the data that you want, you can actually, in most cases, you can find the link to that information if there's a web service or some other pointer back to that information. This information is all built off of the, the current published version of the Geocons, which is version 5. And since we are in the process of publishing version 6, we have noticed that we've got to update some of the links. So we'll be maintaining those as we move forward. So there are some links that, you know, that, that are being maintained and updated. Um, in the future, we hope to be able to pull this live from the catalog, so there's no updating of those things. But this is how you get to the data. This is how you search the data. It's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, and then the other thing that we're trying to add is a community forum here. So we, we realize that we as a community may have questions that um, your better buddy somewhere across the nation may be able to better answer. Um, this is a page uh, that's being developed now. Once it goes live, you'll be able to come in there and post a question. Hey, what data sources are here? Does anybody have recommendations for this? Or has anybody experienced this? And we can go in there as a community and help each other out. Uh, in terms of you know homeland security and homeland defense, David, um, we've had a couple folks asking the question: What does ESF emergency support function mean? Can you articulate uh, that briefly for the audience? Yes, that's a great question. So, um, what there are there's some there are pre-specified emergency support functions, um, and there are 15 of them. Uh, and what they what they are are there's an appointment lead for what those are. I'm sorry. There's an appoint there's a point of lead for each of those emergency support functions, and there's data that's available to support those. And I'm just trying to uh, go to the to the actual my actual diagram of the actual ESF so I can give a, a point example. But let's say there's ESF. You know, um, I'm just give me one second. I'm going to give you a, an, an actual example. Uh, I'm just going to my my document here. Um, So what there are are there these emergency support functions, they specify what is needed for that particular mission and who's responsible for responding to that mission, who's the lead agency and who's supporting agencies. Um, and there's data that's been identified by the or created by the community in an authoritative manner to support those missions. So what you see in a data matrix is you may see, um, if we go back to it, you may see a piece of information that's assigned to that matrix. So what it's been is we as a community deem that this piece of information is relevant to this emergency support function. Um, but you don't know what you don't know, so this document provides that roadmap to understand what information is available and what how it may apply to those emergency support functions. Does that does that answer the question? I think it does, and certainly we can. Um, if the folks who have those questions want to um, follow up, they can reach out to me. We can get them more information um, directly and, and coordinate with you all. Um, we do have a question on this data that you're showing right now. Can I just clarify that this is the GII data sets that you're looking that you're showing? It does include it does include data layers that come from the GII. 
uh, but it also includes other partner data and other data sets that have been identified throughout the lifespan of the GeoComps. So there are other mission partners and data that have been identified as authoritative data sources that support both the mission areas of PPD-8 plus emergency support functions. Okay, so at some point when you um, go through this, there, there are a couple questions on, um, and we get these sorts of questions a lot, uh, especially when it's data, data coming from the um, you know federal government, is what sort of restrictions are placed on this, um, and how does it relate to the HSIP, um, you know, particularly the HSIP gold data sets? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and you guys are, are very astute. There are some restrictions on the data. And like I said, this, this content is all built off of the last year version, version 5 of the GeoConops. As we mature the GeoConops and this website, what we want to do is, is provide that level of fidelity in this data matrix moving forward. So in the, in, hopefully in the near future as we work over the next year, it's, it's our idea that it would be helpful to add a column that kind of talks about, and you can see some of these restrictions. It says, yes, HSIP gold. Um, we're going to do a complete evaluation of what layers are restricted and what's restriction and maybe have a conversation with our partners of, is this really need to be restricted or is this, is this a freedom layer, is this a gold layer? And then once we have all the information, really be able to update this and then provide the information that if it truly is restricted, what scenarios would it be accessible to you? So maybe there's a little cheat sheet guide that says, hey, in this area, these ones are available to you in these scenarios. So you can come in here and see how you get, how, when, it, when you can use it. And then maybe even information of actually how you actually get it. So in that scenario, you might need to get a HISN account. You might need to be nominated. And we can, we'll, we, we believe we'll be for, further flushing this website out to provide those details. So it's a one-stop shop for those. And there are are some gaps right now, um, but those are things that we recognize that we need to do to this website in the future, and that's kind of the plan to, to march forward on. That's great. Thanks a lot. So uh, please, we uh, bombarded you a little bit with questions, so uh, let's jump back into the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. If there's, is, are there any other questions? You know, um, this, I, I kind of feel like the website's pretty straightforward, so you know it, it may make sense to to answer any other questions that exist. Um, the only other questions and comments we've got a couple of folks asking about um, how to, um, you know, they're having troubles with their hidden logins, and so I've, I'm collecting those mm -hmm. information and connecting them with Lou and others. So. Yeah, okay, yeah. So um, we have had, uh, his and went through a, uh, an upgrade at some time ago, and we have had some connection issues. In the slide deck that I have provided, there's some contact information at the end of it. And Mr. O'Rourke has the information to connect those people with Mr. Lou Summers, who is one of our leads here to help help resolve those. Uh, so if anybody's having issues, you know, we want to resolve those as, as soon as humanly possible. So you do have your access as you need to get into the information that is um restricted at a higher level but available to you. Um, okay, so with that, I'll, I'll kind of go back to the, the GeoConOps. Like I said, the the main functions of this are is it carries over the, con the, the content of the previously hard copy GeoConOps. It puts it in a digital form that we think as we mature and add some of the things that we've talked about, the increased search functionality, the increased um, items of how you actually would get access and what information is available to you today or under certain situations. Um, add those details. We think that this will provide a better forum for communicating the information and content with the GeoComps to the community. And we're looking for any feedback that you guys have. Um, this is this is day two that this has been out there. So um, as a favor, what I'm asking is if anybody gets gets around and drives around and says, hey, well, you know, maybe, maybe this link's not efficient or maybe this isn't working or I've experienced these issues with these web browsers, we've tested it pretty thoroughly. Um, if you see things that, that are unideal, please just communicate that back to us. Um, but the main matrix are the data, um, the definition of the Homeland Security missions. So this breaks down the different mission areas that are described within um, – the different requirements that are within the document. There's also uh, the ability to drive and say, okay, well, what do we mean by mission areas, PPD mission areas? If you're not familiar with PPD-8, uh, you can come in here and you can click on those and actually read um, what's meant by those. But the understanding is that um, some of this is, is really, um, y you know, you guys are familiar with some of this. Um, you can access tools, so if you're like, hey, what tools are out there as a community that may help me and assist me in doing my job that I may or may not be aware of, you could access those tools here uh, or those resources and capabilities from this link. 
um, if you're standing things up and you're saying, hey, I really need a capability to do X, Y, or Z, what's out there as a best practice and how can I pattern that new capability off of? This link, the best practices link, provides some of those things that the community has identified. If you want to ping the community for you know greater collaboration, uh, questions and answers, that forum page when it goes live in a couple of days will provide that to you. And if you're like, hey, I just want to have print off a few pages of the GeoConops, or I want to do a search uh, through PDF, or I want to know a little bit about it, or access points of contacts, you can you can get that information from the about about page. Um, that's really what's in the GeoConops website. Um, today. Is there any additional questions on the website? Uh, right now we're good, thank you. Okay. Um, so going back to my slides, um, you know, looking at the GeoConops as a summary, we think that it complements and supports the larger set of initiatives and policies to align key resources and capabilities within the geospatial community. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's important that at the federal level we're working with our other federal partners to uh, ensure that we're working efficiently and effectively, reducing duplication where we can. But it's equally as important to provide a resource to our SLTT partners to understand what is available as a larger community to them so they can tap into it where they need to. And we think that's what the GeoConfs does. It provides the who, what, when, and where to better understand what's available at the federal level to, to you. Um, and through that, we think we can improve and promote and advance the technology tradecraft and find innovative ways and solutions. So as you, as you find new data, I think there are new analytical approaches to leverage that data to make new products that we, we previously couldn't do. And then lastly, we think that the COMP serves as strategic resources for planning and tactical resources to find authoritative data sources, enterprise tools, and best practices to drive. The big thing hey, was David. from – yes, sir. Um, actually, we do have one question going back on the um, website. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. how, how do you get to the green tabs, um, the tools, et cetera? Um, some folks are only seeing the top blue tabs. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's a I don't know if that's an error with um, I don't know if that's an issue with the WebEx or if it's a true issue because I I do see green tabs. Um, mm -hmm. You should see green tabs now. So if you're let me I think the, the, what people might be experiencing if you're on the Geo Platform main page there are no green tabs. To get to the Geo Con Ops you're going to go to the Communities and Agencies page. And then there you'll click on this Homeland Security GeoConf. So when you click on that community, you should go from having just blue tabs to blue and green tabs. And the green tabs are your GeoCon um website. And I, I'll just confirm that I went quickly while you were talking uh, to the link we send out to everybody that goes directly to this, and, and it does show up there. Um, so I think we, we have success. Thanks. Right, and it, again, you know, like I said, we just went live with this. So, if, if there are certain Internet Explorers um, or, or you know, Firefox, you know, browsers that are out there, and you got unique versions, so maybe you know, uh, I'm running IE9 right now, so maybe someone's got likely a newer version out there. Um, if you're using a certain version or a certain browser and you're experiencing issues. Um, please send that information, get that information to us so we can correct those issues. Like I said, we're, we're testing with the, the browsers we have and the versions we have, but there are always things that might be, might be overlooked. So if you do experience that, um, please let me know. Okay, so driving back to this, um, key contact information. Again, we'd really like to thank you for, um, Thank you for the for the opportunity. Um, the points of contact for the GMO are listed there by email. You can feel free um, to contact any one of us at any time. We we stand by to support you guys. Um, key resources and links, if you want direct access without going to the CONOPS website, are available there. Um, and, and I'd like to take this time just to address any questions or comments or feedback that may be uh, still within the audience today. Uh, so I'm just looking to see which more we have. I think we've covered most of the questions. Um, just a couple points that we, we can point out. I, I'll, uh, a lot of the people have been looking at the website, uh, David, and, and coming up with different comments. And what I can do is actually aggregate those comments and send them to you. Um, sure, that'd be so great. We don't have to, we don't have to go. Um, 
we don't have to go through them now. But so far, that the, we you've answered most of the questions. That's good. That good. Um, yeah. You know, typically when we do these things, um, you know, I like to pull the audience and say, okay, who's all heard of the comps? I hope everyone's familiar with it. Um, we recognize that not everyone might be. So we're really trying to get this content in the hands of the people that matter um, and our partners. So, you know, at any point, if you feel like, hey, you know, this doesn't meet my needs or it could be this or have you considered this or why aren't you doing this, you know, that's, that's really, you know, uh, feedback we'd love to have. So anything anything like that, you can either email or put it in the notes that so Mr. O'Rourke can gather those notes up or you can email me directly. Great. I did just get one comment asking specifically, how does the GeoConops affect me as a local fire agency? Yeah. <laughs> open-ended. Yeah, open-ended, right? So, no, I, I think that's a fair question. So, obviously, you know, depending on the roles and responsibilities uh, you have within your within your community um, and how often you may interface with different echelons of the government, the utility of uh, of the geoconops may have varying levels of importance to you. Um, this really is tailored for, for the missions that require, hey, I've got this mission and I've got some geospatial aspects to this mission that I'm looking to fulfill and there's maybe a data or information gap. Um, or I'd like to apply geospatial technology resources and capabilities and I don't know how to do it. So what this comps does for you is it provides a resource for, hey, what data sources are available? And what you'll find is a lot of those data sources may be available for your area, depending on the area in which you, which you operate. Uh, without knowing where that came from and some investigation, I couldn't tell you if that, that exists. But there is a wealth of information that is available, geospatial information that's available. Not only does this document tell you what is available, who the, it tells you who is the sponsoring agency and how you get to that information. So as a, as a local responder, you may say, hey, I really could need information on utilities or uh, hydro, hydro, hydro layers or transportation layers and what may be available to me. Instead of saying, well, let me go procure or, or create that information, you can come here and see what exists to you and then how you get that information in, in the most efficient and effective way. Likewise, with the resource and capabilities, you might say, hey, you know, I think geospatial information technologies or tradecraft may support me in this mission in the future, but I really don't understand how I would apply those techniques to really benefit from there. Through the best practices, the tools, the resource and capabilities page, you can see how other people within a community have applied it and then understand how, how you can adopt or adapt some of those to your to your situation. It also provides links to like the NAPSIG's uh, carrot, if you're familiar with there, which helps provide an assessment of, you know, what you're trying to do and some assessments of other capabilities that are available to you. So I think that's really how it's important to you. It's, it's going to vary based upon your interaction with different levels of government and your appetite for geospatial information. But Certainly, um, since you're here today, I think that there's some need for geospatial information to support our missions, and I think it could be an asset. This provides you the tools to not only find the data and information, but some best practices and capabilities to help you. And, and David, I would just add, um, part of our view at NAPSIG is, is the importance of the geospatial concept of operations from that homeland security perspective. And, and I like that it's been changed from federal to homeland security. Um, right. is that it really gives county, local, and even state agencies an ability to understand, one, what's available, but two, what's expected of them and what resources right. can be expected to be coming in and, and what resources um, they need to be expecting to, to utilize from, from their own um, uh, you know, toolbox. And, and sure. so what that does, it, again, going always back to NAPSIG's mission, is it allows the local agencies and other agencies to better prepare way ahead of time for whatever incident might be coming down. So we try to ingrain this as just, and if you look at our standard operating guidance documents, which are perfectly aligned with the GeoConops um, that you guys have done, really it's all about getting this done right well ahead of time. Um, so that there are no surprises and everyone knows what resources are available and we've planned and trained around those resources being available and those best practices being adopted. Um, so that, that's something we certainly focus on. Uh, we have yeah, two more questions. Yeah, yeah, we do have two more questions. Um, are EMI courses updated when the GeoConops courses are updated? Right. So uh, the, the, current, uh, the current courses that are available are updated to they don't dive down into specific data sources. They were meant to be uh, 
a little bit more generic in terms of how you use the comps. We do intend to update them and create new uh, web, uh, web courses in the future. Um, the current ones are, are still valid in terms of this publication release, but in the future we will have either updated or new courses to, to complement the CONOPS and to include some of the things that Mr. O'Rourke was talking about with the standard operating guides as well as any CARAT assessment tool, the, the capabilities and readiness assessment tool. So we think that there's going to be some other courses developed in partnership to really drive home some of the things that we're both trying to achieve. Great. Um, another question is, uh, and this is something that's really near near and dear to our heart, especially when you talk about some of these HSIP data layers. Um, how can um, local agencies provide more accurate data up to the national resources and the national sources of data? Right. Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, Within within the enterprise, there are many different aspects to there. Well, my colleague, Mr. Mike Donnelly, he he works hard to work with uh, the High Field Working Group. If you're familiar with there, with that with that working group, and what we're trying to do with that is identify data sources that are available um, within that enterprise that have that enterprise reaching um, kind of capacity. So if you have information that you think, hey, this is really you know, large enough, but I don't really have the means to share this with my community, and, and there is enough appetite and demand for that information, the idea would be that we can maybe work with you to include those in future releases of HACIP data or to make them available within the GII. I mean, so there, there's some practices that we're working on to try to adopt or adapt the information that's available. Um, and and it, I think that kind of ties back into uh, the earlier question. So not only does this provide you with the resources to what's available, if you see federal or other national information that's, you know, quote unquote national, that's supposed to be servicing some of your needs, but it's missing an attribute or it's not related to the accuracy you need, we can, we, we can help or you can provide because you can find out who the points of contact are within the comps. Some feedback to them to say, hey, this data could better serve us here. Oh, and by the way, we're already collecting this piece of information. How do you incorporate within the data set? So I think there's multiple uh, avenues for approach. Um, but with the GMO, if you have information that you think that's, uh, you know, enterprising or has a community-wide kind of need or or, uh, or at least a localized need, but there's, you know, certain focuses on there, you know, we'd be interested in talking to you about that. Great. Yeah, it, it's something that it, it's probably a, a, not a, a question or an issue we can solve today, but it's certainly something that a lot of folks in our community um, who sometimes are frustrated with the timeliness of the H of gold data being available um, sure. would love to have that tremendously valuable resource more readily available and then also create a feedback loop so that they can you know perfect that data when they see some inconsistencies so it's um, it's the HF gold is one of the things that NAPSIG has long said is one of the best things the government does or just be great if there'd be a way we could um, get it more readily available Sure, sure. You know, and, and my colleagues, Mr. Mike Donnelly and, and my supervisor, Mr. Alexander, um, you know, we, we recognize that as the best practices. Listen, when the cost, we're a partner of, of, of uh, we're within a partnership to provide HSIP. Um, we, we recognize that there, there, are, there are opportunities to do better, and we're working feverishly to do that. But if you have comments and stuff like that, uh, there, there are forums for you to, to, to communicate that. And, you know, um, we, we are trying to be as responsive to those concerns and comments as, as we can. Sure, um, and, and we've got a great relationship with those folks, and, and we continue to pepper you guys with that comment. So, um, yeah, the the last question uh, should be a real easy one, I hope. Um, as everyone knows, we record these sessions and then post the link to the recording for download to folks um, whenever they feel like it. Um, could we also, uh, we have several requests for your slides. Could we include your slide deck with the um, uh, link to the recording as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so David will send that to me, and, and we hope to have the slide deck um, and the recording uh, available on our, our website uh, a little bit later on, um, probably tomorrow morning at the latest. Uh, with that, David, did you have anything else? It looks like we answered all the questions. Yeah, you know, I got a, I got a question here uh, via email just on some of the data. Um, how do you actually get to the data? So the link, let me just show you that. So um, some of the data, and this goes back to another question that Mr. O'Rourke had mentioned, is you know some of the information may be protected or behind an SBU um, wall. Um, we we 
in the future, we intend to add that fidelity of information to the data matrix, so that's a little bit more intuitive. Um, but if you have the right tokens to some of this information, within the data matrix, there's a, a column on the far uh, right that calls link. You can right-click and say copy address. And if you have accesses to that information, you should be able to use that in a, you know, ArcGIS or ArcGIS Online or whatever, whatever program you're using that consumes web services. Um, but like I said, some of the links are broken because data has changed from the version 5 to the version 6, and we intend to maintain those links as we move forward. So this is really built off of version 5 of the console, which was done last year, and we're in the process of the version 6. So we recognize that some of those links may, may have gotten broken or have modified over the last couple months. So um, if you had trouble or if you don't have the right tokens uh, to access that information, we need to work with you to get, get you um, accesses to there. And that's where I was thinking we can update the slide to show you, okay, this one you need to contact the GMO or the GII to get access, or this one you would contact these people. So we have a little bit of work to do, but that's how you would access the data. Okay, that's great. So I'll, I'll wait for you uh, to post the um, the recording and the, and the uh, presentation until you're comfortable with the, the, the PowerPoint being updated. Um, yep. Anything else? Any more questions sent to you? No, that's it. That's all I got, sir. Okay, great. Well, look, I want to um, thank you very much uh, to David Lilly and to your team for putting together this great presentation. Um, we we real, really are a big fans of a lot of the work you guys do, and you're, you're tireless in, in doing it. So thank you very much for your time and for sharing your time with us. Um, and most important, thank you to our participants who um, spent a, a good hour of their lunchtime, for the folks on the East Coast at least, um, participating in this session. Um, these are training sessions that, for the most part, you all ask for. Um, so we're responsive to you, and, and we try to provide information that you find both relevant, interesting, and informative. So always feel free to contact NAPSIG for more ideas that you'd like to see, um, and we will do our best to provide this training to you. Um, so that will conclude today's session. Uh, thank you again to everyone, and we look forward to seeing you next week um, for the Charlotte Fire Department's training session. Goodbye. Okay, great. Thank you.